two-year-old bravely sacrifices his body to save an eight-year-old girl when no one else would. Everyone has heard the phrase, not all heroes wear capes, at some point in their lives. It's a great way of saying that everyday people have it in themselves to act heroically, so long as they dig deep within to find it. Never has the label of hero been more fitting than when it was applied to 92-year-old John Shear, a security guard at the Santa Anita racetrack in California. Two years ago, when he saw a five-year-old girl in serious danger on the track, he was ready to make the ultimate sacrifice to save her. John Shear, a 92-year-old man from Santa Anita, California, isn't your typical elderly man. People often tell him how great he looks for his age. Most wouldn't say he looks a day over 70. There is, of course, a method to keeping himself looking so fantastic. That's because every morning he hits his local gym to perform a rigorous workout. This includes tackling a series of push-ups, sit-ups, and squats. Not bad for an old-timer. As a security guard at the Santa Anita racetrack for the past 51 years, John has always done his best to take care of his body. Nevertheless, when he saw someone in trouble two years ago, he didn't hesitate to put his own body in danger to rescue her. When a horse race was set to begin, John took his place as usual, holding a rope across the paddock fence before the horses would be let out onto the track. The crowd was growing excited and anticipating the race that was mere seconds from beginning. Standing at just five feet tall, John might not immediately strike most people as someone who'd be employed as a security guard. Perhaps what set him apart, though, was his unique bravery. It certainly did that day. Suddenly, John heard a horrifying shriek from across the racetrack. When he turned, he saw that a horse was loose and running around wildly. He attempted to warn people to get out of the way, but the area was too loud for anyone to hear him. Still, determined to get the situation under control, John ran toward the horse. When he got closer, he could make out that someone was standing directly in the horse's path. A little five-year-old girl named Roxy Key, who was unaware that she was about to be trampled. Roxy's father, Michael, was standing close by, likewise oblivious to the danger headed in his daughter's direction. So John decided to take measures into his own hands, running towards the little girl. When he got close enough, he lunged. Before I could even think to even move, here comes Mr. Shear, Michael recalled from an interview. John made it to Roxy in time, effectively shielding her from the danger, though he was struck by the rearing horse instead. She got up and I was shaking. I was in shock. Michael explained to the incident. And she's like, I'm fine, Papa. I'm fine. But then she looked over and saw Mr. Shear on the ground, and there was blood hemorrhaging, and she just lost it. She just lost it. I knew I was going to get hit, John mentioned, remembering how the event transpired. I thought there was a possibility I was going to die, but you cannot stop and think, should I or shouldn't I? This is a five-year-old girl. I'm 90 years old. I've had a life. She hasn't had a life. You've got to save that life. Following the incident, John remembered the moment that he lost consciousness. He'd been pummeled and was covered in his own blood. I heard her say when her dad asked her if she was fine, she said, yes, dad, I'm all right. I felt better that she was safe, he added. Naturally, Michael felt a tremendous sense of gratitude for what John sacrificed that day. She would have been dead. It would have crushed her, and I would have had, I would have been holding my dead baby in my arms, he explained. Thankfully, a team of emergency responders arrived to the racetrack and rushed John to a nearby hospital. He was immediately placed on an operating table, and the doctor scrambled to set his broken bones and restore the blood he'd lost. Even though things looked grim for John, he was nothing if not a tough man, and he continued to fight. Just a short while later, it was clear that he was going to pull through. He continued to recover for a while, but he only had one thing on his mind. The only thing John cared about was getting to meet Roxy, the five-year-old girl whose life he'd saved that fateful day. Sadly, he wasn't able to. I have always wanted to meet Roxy and was so sad that I never got the chance to meet her when I got better, he mentioned. Then, two years later, his wait was over. Roxy's family decided he should surprise her and they invited him to one of the little girl's dance recitals. I kept saying to myself, is that Roxy? Where is she? I was on pins and needles waiting to see her. And when I finally saw her come out and dance, it felt so exhilarating. I can hardly explain. I felt so emotional in my heart, he recalled. Following the recital, John finally had the opportunity to meet Roxy face to face, along with her mother, who expressed her gratitude for his actions.
You're my daughter's guardian angel, she lovingly told John. And Michael added, he didn't save a daughter, he saved a family. It goes without saying that Michael and his family will forever be grateful for John's heroic actions. If it wasn't for his selflessness, they wouldn't all be together today. John, of course, remains humble about his role in the rescue. Regardless, we all can call him what he is, a hero. Never has that label been more fitting than when it's used to describe his actions. Way to go, John. Share this heroic story with your friends below.